I love that. That's so cool. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Once again, thank you all for taking time out of your busy schedules to join us in this momentous time. And we want to thank everyone and bless everyone on the Father's Day, especially ones that are on here and the ones that will not be on here. So anyone want to kick us off in prayer? Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> all right. I can... You love the way I speak, right? <laughs> well there's blessings in the word oh where'd my sister go my, my little niece is back oh well she'll be back all right praise report testimonies by the ways everyone should have a praise report and testimony That's something yes. to share <laughs> good morning adrian and go for it anson um so an incident happened just about one and a half to two weeks ago um, once again, I was surfing around in Instagram when I saw a website that was selling fountain pens, the usual. <laughs> <laughs> and so I went online and I checked it out and I bought pens from them and they were selling one fountain pen and they would add in another two for free. So I was like, oh, okay. I mean, they look like a legit company. Why not? Uh, but a few days after I found out that those same fountain pens are actually sold at AliExpress for pennies to the dollar. <laughs> oh wow! I paid I paid about eighty five Canadian, uh, but the fountain pens that are found in AliExpress were like four dollars. <laughs> so I knew it was a scam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so and so I sent an email to them that hey, I found out that your fountain pens are actually found in AliExpress and also other websites that are similar to what yours looks like. I want a refund. And so uh -huh. they sent back an email saying that, hello, sir, you've, paid, uh, you've already ordered this for more than 24 hours. I'm afraid you can't uh, get a refund on this item. It's already been processed. And so I was scratching my head. I was like, but the item's not been shipped yet. Like it's still, it's still being in process until four weeks after then that's they're going to ship. Right. I told my mom about this and, and, <laughs> and my mom and I were just thinking to ourselves, <laughs> no, we will get the money back. It'll be super easy. It'll be fine. But then uh, right after that conversation, I was, I was somehow tapping an email, but I wasn't feeling right. I was, I was like, I'm not happy at what they did. They totally scammed me. They knew that it was the case. And so mm -hmm. I replied to them that I cannot accept this. I would like my refund right now, or I will dispute it with PayPal or my credit card if I have to. And I sent them that. And after I sent it, I actually felt really bad because I thought like, man, I must've been really harsh. And I told mom about it. And my mom was like, yeah, I think you were a little bit harsh, but we'll see how that turns out. <laughs> Five minutes later, I got no full refund. <laughs> <laughs> so you followed your instinct in your intuition. You followed uh -huh. your, that was revelation. Because you thought, man, I'm being mean, but are they being mean to you? I guess they are, yeah. <laughs> They're not. They they were not wanting to give you your money back, and they were trying to scam you. Is that not being mean? <laughs> yeah. So it wasn't in terms of a mean, but it was a, it was a, I know how to play this game with you, and I know how to get my money back. Mm -hmm. And then you got your money back within five minutes of, oh well, we can't do this because it's still in process, and oh now, I can go through PayPal and I can retrieve my money because mm -hmm. we have these means now. That's right. <laughs> and then you send them love and pray that they don't scam anyone else because at the end of the day they are broken hearted mm -hmm. these are people who are thinking they need to cheat others um, from their hard earned money so that they can survive and that's just mm -hmm. the world we live in this is why we're here to change those perceptions and those mindsets mm -hmm. thank you for that and then congratulations on getting your money back <laughs> Others were not fortunate as you. <laughs> Any other praise report testimonies, by the way? None. All right. Many. <laughs> many. Too many. <laughs> well, give me one at least. <laughs> give me one. Okay. Give me one is that I'm so, I'm happy and I'm glad that the kids, my kids, uh, get 
to create and they are good in creating now. Yes. Uh, and they apply it in their schoolwork and they all get A's. <laughs> Both good Selena job. and Stanley. Congratulations. The future presidents of the country. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> good job. The sky's the limit. Who's to say? Who's to say that they they shouldn't? Why not? We need more diversity in this country. We need more people that come with more youthful intelligence, more common sense to break the monotony of what we're seeing between our Republican and democracy that we have here. So yes, congratulations to them. That's the game. Selena, Selena is hearing it and she he, she's shaking her head. <laughs> Well, Selena is meant to create uh, beautiful sculptures and items like that. That's what she's supposed to be doing. She's supposed to already be halfway around the globe selling her items and merchandise. So she's behind the curveball. But good job on your A's. <laughs> yeah. right. I asked. I thought I asked her. Uh, I asked her if she want to take some, uh, you know, uh, art lesson or something like that. Um, she said, no, I, I think it's because she, she has no uh, time right now because busy with the school work. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Summer, summer, they're taking classes in summer too. So summer classes are very hectic. Well, not now, but later. This is what we call time management. Just because it's not present now doesn't mean it's not gonna be present later because the school is not forever. Yeah, 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 that's right. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So you never know what happens. Go ahead, Lily. Yeah, um, usually <laughs> when um, the opportunity will come looking for her. So you don't yeah. have to worry. Nope. Matter of fact, because she's so blessed and Stanley's so blessed and Anson and Adrian and all of you are so blessed, Tori, my children, my niece, because of your understanding of who you are and who you're becoming, who you choose to be as the beloved children of God, then opportunity comes and knocks on your door. You don't have to go seeking for it. So when it says seek and you'll find, you've already found it. You found it within yourselves. Everything you need is where? Within. Hallelujah. <laughs> there is nothing that you cannot do. There is nothing that is not impossible to you. Why? Is there anything too hard for God? No. Where is God? Greater is he who is in me. So God is within me. So I got to go within me and tap into that unlimited power. So when I speak the word or the verb, there's vibration, there's matter, there's energy. This is what you call creation. This is what you call the Holy Trinity. This is what we call the father of us all. You see how I roll right into that topic? <laughs> so today is Forefathers Day, and we'll explain why it's called Forefathers Day. And our affirmation today, and notice I didn't give any questions because the answers are already within you, but we want you to ask a lot of questions because when we say, Father, which is in heaven, what does that mean to you? Describe that. What does it look like? What does it feel like? Yes, Lily. It's the head of the family. So it's the head of the universe. Yes. And that is what? Love. And in truth, when we, sp when we speak about God or Father, the very first process was unity. It was unity that keeps us together. It is unity that falls under the umbrella of love. United we stand, divided we what? We fall. Simple concept. <clears throat> so our affirmation is, my father and I are what? One. When the masters walked the earth, they always taught that you and the father were what? One. And they also taught that you were not separate. Buddha did not separate. Jehovah did not separate. Allah did not separate. Krishna did not separate. None of them 
masters separated themselves, but they were always what? Included. It was always inclusive, was it not? <clears throat> so when people describe God, look how many ways they describe God. You have a loving God, you have a vengeful God, you have a neutral God. Then you have element gods, sky gods, water gods, mythological gods, <laughs> demon gods, all the different. So when you talk about God, think about how broad of an area that you're talking about. And especially when you're talking with religion attached to it, because now people will begin to argue over which name is the name of God. Some would say Jehovah, some would say Allah, some would say Buddha, some would say Jesus. Some would say the, the one before, some would say the eternal one, the Holy Spirit. And then we would say, you're all saying the same thing. <laughs> no need to fight over it because <clears throat> he is the father of us all. We told you all before that if God, our father, were to ever take his eyes off of you, you would cease to what? Exist. But because of his unconditional love that he has for us, and you are here in the present, then it is his will for you to be here because of his love. Make sense? All right. <clears throat> so now when we talk about God, we talk about the one God that is defined in many concepts of aspects. Does that make sense? Anybody want to kick off the first paragraph? He has been called by countless names for those who have sought him. He has been called Allah, Jehovah, Buddha, Yeshua, Source, Lord, the, the one who is Father, Creator, Great Spirit, Holy Spirit, Eternal One, the all that is and commonly God. I want you to know that all the people born on the earth or born on earth from the foundation of the world until now, all have inquired about God, who he is, who she is, who it is, and who and what is like, and they have not found him. The wisest of people have speculated on the basis of the order of movement of the universes, the rotation of the stars, the planetary system, the birthing of galaxies, but yet, their speculation has missed the truth. Someone read the next one. <clears throat> it is said that the Lucifer voice raises faint companions about the order of the universe, and they disagree with each other. <laughs> Some of them say that the world, the world governs itself. Others say the divine forethought governs it. Still, others that fate, others that fate is in charge. All these opinions are wrong. Of the, of the three opinions I have just mentioned, none of them come close to the truth. They are mainly human opinions. That's it. I have come from the infinite light. I am here and I can tell you exactly what the truth is for any life that comes from itself is defiled, made by itself. For thought, wisdom, fate remains simple. It is given to you, however, to know the truth. Whoever deserves knowledge will receive it. Whoever has not been conceived by the semen of unclean sexual rubbing, but by the first one, who sent for that person is immortal among mortal people. All right, Tori, read the next one. The one who is? The one who is in a feeble from the foundation of the world until now, no power, no authority, no creature, no nature has known the one who is. Mm. Only the one who is and one who, whom this one wishes to give revelation due to and necessary from the first light knows the one who is. Henceforth, I am the great savior. The one who is, is immortal and eternal and being eternal is without birth. For whoever is born will die, unconceived without a beginning. For whoever has a beginning has an end, undominated without a name. Whoever has a name has been made by another. The one who has an appearance of its own, not like anything you have seen and received, 
but an alien appearance that surpasses any, any, everything, and it's superior to the universe. It looks everywhere and behold itself in itself. When we talk about God, <clears throat> we would like you to think about God as a giant sphere, and then within it, a torus with waves. Within the center, there is a void. That's why when you read in your Holy Scripture and the earth was out void, this is the void that we're speaking of. This is the ninth dimension. This is where your dimensions come from. Seventh being your heaven, where you would call the, the heavenly realms. The one is infinite, incomprehensible, and constantly imperishable. The one is unequaled, immutably, good, without fault, eternal, blessed, unknown, yet it knows itself. The one is immeasurable, untraceable, perfect, without defect. The one is blessed, imperishably, and is called the father of all. Hallelujah, everyone. The beginning of the manifestation of the one who is. Before anything becomes visible of visible things, the majesty and the authority are in him. Since he grasps everything while nothing grasps him, he is all mine. He is thought, consideration, reflection, reason, and power. And all are equally powerful. These are the sources of all that is and the entire generation from the first to the last was in the foreknowledge of the infinite unconceived father. The spirit who was the one who conceives the one who has the power of conception and can, can give form so that the abundant wealth within might be revealed. Did everybody catch this part? Does everyone understand this? The spirit who is, was the one who conceives. The one who has the power of conception can give form so that the abundant wealth within might be what? Revealed. This is where your power comes from within. In mercy and love, <clears throat> the spirit wished to produce fruit independently that the spirit might not enjoy goodness alone, but the other spirits of the unshakable generation might produce bodies and fruit, glory and honor, and imperishability and the infinite grace of the spirit. In this way, the goodness of the spirit could be revealed by the self-conceived God, the father of all imperishability, and who's who were to come later. So we are the who's who that were to come later because this is where we get the image and the likeness of God. So when the male aspect of God is present, this is where the fathers come in as being the male dominant, not in terms of taking over, but in terms of a balance. Does that make sense? In other words, fatherhood, represents fertility. Women represent womb. So we can gather, make what? Creation. Does that make sense? <clears throat> uh, da, 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 da. <clears throat> but nothing has had become visible yet. This is why when you read in your Holy Scriptures before you hear your Adam story, nothing was made yet and the earth was in darkness. There are many differences among the imperishable beings. So did anybody get a chance to read the rise of the gods, that information a little bit? When you get a chance to read it, this will make a whole lot more sense of what we're trying to describe of the concept of God. Because when you talk about God the Father, we're talking about a concept. This is why the mind is so extensive in your Bible. Everyone is to have the mind of God, the mind of Christ. Does that make sense? <clears throat> yes, no, maybe so? Okay. Whoever has ears to hear about infinite things should hear. It is to those who are awake that I speak. Everything from the perishable will perish since it is from the perishable. But everything from the imperishable does not perish but becomes imperishable since it is from imperishable that is you all 
Many people have gone astray because they did not know about this distinction and they have died. So you don't have to die because of this misunderstanding. Once you know you're eternal, you can live as long as you want. Past of that is impossible. Well, then why is in your Old Testament, Methuselah being the oldest man mentioned in the Bible? And then everyone before him or after him was living into their 500 years and longer, correct? So all of a sudden, how do you go from living from almost 900 years to 80 years that your scientist giving you? I think you might've reached 96, maybe 100 if you're lucky, but look how that stretch is. It is because of the mindset of being the perishable. And it is the fathers, nothing against the moms, to bring that consciousness in and the moms to bring in the balance of it. Does that make sense? <clears throat> now we talk about the father and the kingless generation. You must bring yourself from what is, yes. Pastor. Sure. Uh, <clears throat> Why the mom, why the female is the balance? <clears throat> oh, because the female is the only one that can create from the womb. When you say balance, it's actually balance in all ways, right? In yeah. all, all terms. Do you realize women balance men? This is the cycle, whether you've been told or not told, but this is the, the, the truth. Women balance men. <laughs> it's no, it, and that's where that's where the that's where the mindset or the misconception is is the control it's not about control it's about unity it's about oneness it's about harmony it's about going to the basic level of the respect yes lily um i always say that the male and female will form a king Work together because yeah. they have their strengths and weaknesses, so they will make up for each other. And the flesh becomes what one when you do your vows, and the flesh becomes one not only just when you do your vows, but when you are in intercourse, even when you are not in intercourse and you are in relationship with one and you are of the same mindset and you begin to complete each other's words or sentences or thoughts. Hey, I was just thinking that, and then they say it. It is that balance. It is the co-creation that mirrors God. Does that make sense? In other words, you all are being taught to be gods and goddesses on earth, priests and priestesses, because this is who you are. You are spirit materialized in the flesh. <clears throat> so when you look at the womb, if you ever look at the if you ever look at the seed of life, I don't have it with me, but if you ever look at the seed of life, there are in the middle, it is the shape of a vagina, and then the others is the eyes, and then the head, which represents your chakra system. This is the womb. Everything comes from the womb. Without the womb, nothing can be birthed. Does that make sense? You have to have it. Pretty simple, yes? This is why we say the balance. Not in terms of a honeydew list. <laughs> not a honeydew list, not a control factor, but a cohesiveness, a collaboration. Deliberately collaborating, not something forced. Make sense? <clears throat> okay. You must bring yourselves from what is invisible to the end of those who are visible and the emanation of thought itself will reveal to you how faith and what is invisible can be found in those who are visible. If y'all can catch this right here, it is like saying in your Hebrews chapter 11, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. This is one of the ways that you can create and manifest. So if you can go in that scripture, Hebrews chapter 11, and look at the now faith is, and then come back here and match what we're saying to that, 
you will understand how to increase your faith. Side note, <clears throat> whoever has ears should hear. The Lord of the universes is addressed not as father, but as forefather. The father is the beginning of those who will appear, but the Lord is the forefather without beginning. When the forefather saw himself within himself in a father without a beginning. I know that sounds confusing, but when you read the rise of God, you'll get a better understanding. When the forefather saw himself within himself in a mirror, his resemblance appeared there, but his image appeared as the divine father by himself and the reflection above reflections and the first existing unconceived father. In other words, this is where God is created. How was God created? We are telling you how God was created. He is old as the light before him, but not as powerful. Afterward, there was revealed a multitude of beings just as old and powerful who are self-conceived and reflective, glorious and without number. Their generation is designated the generations over whom there is no kingdom. You yourselves have appeared from the people of this generation. And the whole multitude of beings with no kingdom over them is, the designate, is designated the children of the unconceived father, God, savior, son of God, whose likeness is among you. This is the unknowable one who is full of imperishable glory and ineffable joy. And all these beings are at rest in him, constantly rejoicing in ineffable joy in the father's unfading glory and unending praise that was never heard or known amongst the aeons and the other worlds. When we talk about the aeons and the archons, this is what you would all define as demons. But this is what we would define as your negative and your positive. Because this is how creation was started, was through a positive and a negative, that that you would call light and that you would call the dark. <clears throat> Many men have questioned Father God, if God is perfect, why did he allow all these things to get all messed up in this world and why must it be like this? Anybody ever ask that question? Yes. Well, to answer you, my children, the question lies in the deeper mystery of the universe is in the highest meaning of life. As your father, I do not show my goodness. I'm talking as God, as a channeler. My goodness by creating only what you call perfection all around you. I do not demonstrate my love by not allowing you to demonstrate yours. Everybody get that? God allows you to demonstrate your love just like he demonstrates his love. So the fathers should demonstrate the loves to their families. That way, it's a receptive. It's a balance. Make sense? You cannot demonstrate not loving. A thing cannot exist without its opposite except in the world of absolute. Yet the realm of the absolute was not sufficient for either you or me. I existed there in the eternal now, and it is from where you two have come. In the absolute, there is no experience, only knowing. Remember we talked about this is above your faith. When you understand truly about faith, you get into your knowing. Your faith becomes your knowing. Knowing is a divine state, yet the grandest joy is being. Being is part of your experience to learn, to evolve, to grow as God. Being is achieved only after what? Experience. The evolution is this, knowing, experiencing, being. This is the Holy Trinity, the triune. It would also be your um, vibration, energy, matter. It would be your will, wisdom, love. It would be your Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Your Trinity. It would be your spirit, soul, body. Does that make sense? Father God... <clears throat> is knowing the parent of all understandings. 
the begetter of all experience, for you cannot experience that which you do not know. God the Son is experiencing the embodiment, the acting out, the be, do, have of all the Father knows of itself, for you cannot be that which you have not experienced. God the Holy Spirit is being the disembodiment of all that the Son has experienced of itself. The simple equisitiveness possible only through the memory of the knowing and experiencing. The simple being is bliss. It is God's state after knowing and experiencing self. It is that which our Father yearned in the beginning. The relationship has always been parent offspring or that which gives to rise and that which is risen. Adding the third party of the Trinity produces this relationship, that which gives rise to that which is risen, that which is. This triune reality is Father's signature. It is the divine pattern or the divine will, also called the Christ blueprint. I will teach you more about this after we finish this series. The three in one is everywhere found in the realms of the sublime. This is our forefather and he is unconditional love, unconditional forgiveness, unconditional compassion, unconditional mercy. Thank you. There is nothing you can do to offend our forefather. He is forever forgiving, forever loving, forever compassionate. Only accept that the truth that you are only loved beyond what you could ever know or even comprehend his being as love. This is our forefather. Happy Father's Day. I know that was a lot. <laughs> Questions, comments, concerns? Pretty straightforward. Yes, Lily? Hey, I, I know there are some people who are like that. It's that uh, because you have unconditional love for me, so I will test you. Well, there's no test because the test is already accepting we are unconditional love and we are one. So now how could you ever offend me? Can't. There's, not th there's nothing you can say or do to offend me or even push my buttons across me. Can't even talk about my mama and offend me. <laughs> yes. So, but even though, even though we can reach the unoffendable uh, state, people will still try. They will still try. Absolutely. But you know why they try? Here's, here's why they try. Remember we talked about the seven laws, which is one of the laws is your law of attraction. So you have to ask yourself, they're testing me because there's something within me that needs to be what? Healed. And then once I'm healed from it, there's no longer the people there to test me. Because why? You've outgrown it. Now you attract that that you're wanting. More desirable people. Someone that you can relate to. Someone you can have a relationship with. Someone that you don't have to be other than yourself and hide your feelings and then, oh, they're going to judge me. These aren't friends, those are associates. Does that make sense? So when they begin to test you, you have to say, there's something within me that I need to heal from. If somebody pushes past the button, I have to go, okay, I need to go within and say, okay, I need to find out what, what made them push my button because they should not have that much control over me. <laughs> yes, Lily. I know. I know. So something did happen like a, a two weeks ago and uh, I I would say I was so hurt, mm -hmm. and I couldn't I couldn't even tell myself, oh Holy Spirit, help me to heal this brother. No, I'm busy healing myself. <laughs> well, you got to start yourself, right? Here's the thing. <laughs> But you it, still can ask the Holy Spirit to heal you. <laughs> well, this is true, but here's how it works. If if a sick person can't heal someone who's sick, can they? No. A poor person can't help a rich person get rich. Yeah. So you have to do what? You got to get right first and forgive yourself and identify, hey, what, what ticked me off? What upset me? What, what made me feel less than joyful 
less than happy, sad, hurt. Why did I feel hurt from this person that is supposed to love me, they call family or my friend or whoever? Why did I allow them to do that to me? If they loved me, I would never do that to them. And then you'd have to go, well, maybe I did think of that somewhere years ago. Well, Pastor, I know I forget. Well, maybe you didn't. If not, then go within. What is it within me that I need to address? What is it within me that I need healing of? And normally, it is related to mistrust, right? Because here's why. Your instinct told you prior to, and you didn't want to believe it. You had a good instinct. And some people go, well, no, I didn't, I didn't see that one coming, Pastor. Yeah, you felt it. Because why? I knew it. I knew it. That's the little voice where you go, oh, I should have listened to that little voice. I should have seen that one coming because they started talking funny. They started acting funny. They start behaving funny. They start changing their ways. They start treating me a little bit different. Slowly start saying little key words. Of, Wait a minute, what, what'd you say that for? Did you not get the telltale signs? No, no. It was uh, between two other people that I assume I was caught in the middle of it. Oh, throw it in, drag drug in. Ooh, I know, right? I was like, yeah, was I a sucker? I got sucked into it. But that's okay. I get it done. I heal myself. I'm gonna heal you. Oh, well, then you should uh, say. Uh, oh, no, you should say that this is not my energy. Leave. Yep. Ignore. Well, here's the thing. We always ask you this. Here's the first thing that we would always want to. Once you identify what it is, like you did, ask yourself immediately, what did I learn from it? What I, and when we say that, say it from a place of love. What did I learn from this experience? Because no, I in the first place, place, no, Pastor, in the first place, this is not hurting. Then why would she drug into it? There's no, that's, there's no that's accident. That's right. That's <laughs> right. You shouldn't even... <laughs> Uh, react to it. It's not your thing. True. It's other people that bring her in, try to bring her in, but that's why she should say, no, it's not my thing. Go ahead, Lily. Okay, by, by the evening, in, in about four hours, I got the answer. Uh -huh. Lily, uh -huh. don't listen to the crazy guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And do what? Why? The thing is, why was I drug into it? Yes. Uh -huh. Why? Why was the question is why was I drug into it? What was other thinking, people's? What was I thinking to attract this to myself? Because I... if you do not accept that first thought, it will continue to happen. But pastor, question, pastor. Yes. Some like you said, right? Sometimes you are not the cause. You. And somebody have malicious thinking, you know, mm -hmm. thinking that, oh, okay, if I pull this person in, maybe I will get something out of it, you know? Mm -hmm. True. Remember how your family used to try to do you like that? Yeah. <laughs> oh, how quickly we forget. Oh, huh? the, the guilty, the guilty, right? <laughs> <laughs> and we've all been, we've all been there. We've all been drug into it. The thing is, I had to say I attracted it. What did I learn from it? Because once I learned from it, now I won't get drug into it anymore because now they'll know to keep my name out of their mouth. They'll know to keep my name out of their consciousness except where I need it from love. I'm going to go to pastor with help or I need pastor for healing or I need pastor for prayer. I need Now you're going to come this matter. Now I change it by accepting, okay, what did I learn from it? There was something with me that I needed some love. I need I needed some love from daddy. Daddy, I need I need a big hug. And that's okay. We have to accept, hey, I need this. Because how else can I evolve and learn and grow if I don't? 
life happens. You cannot just go through this thing thinking it's not going to happen. The thing is, what do you do when it happens? Do you go into a place of love? Do you stay neutral or do you overreact? Do you choose love or do you choose fear? What choices am I making when I'm drugged into this? Am I judging them and am I judging myself? Oh man, they're crazy. I just judged them. Yeah, they might be acting crazy, but let's not call them crazy. <laughs> let's not give them fuel to the fire. Let's give them water to put the fire out and say, you know what? I love them exactly where they are and I love what they're creating because this is their, watch this, Melissa, to answer your question. This is their experience and it's my job knowing what I know now to send them the good, the holy, and the beautiful without overreacting and not get caught up or being drug into it with an emotion of sadness or hurt feelings. That a little bit better? Now, once that happens, now you can, okay, Holy Spirit, I need you to heal these two crackheads. <laughs> We're teasing. <laughs> Does that make sense? And sometimes you got to look at that stuff and laugh, man. I'm, I, I know it's hard, but sometimes you got to just look at that and go, really? What are we, five? <laughs> what are you, elementary? <laughs> yes, Lily. I, I sometimes think that because um, I'm very good in staying neutral, so I guess the universe sent me a big one. And I dropped into my lap and I was going like, what? Yep. Yep. Okay, I learned my lesson. Yeah, he, he actually came for, they came for healing. So yep. one got healed, right? Yep. One got better. Is this yep. the other one? Is this something? So that's fine. So now watch what happened. They were lashing out, miscreating, but was wanting what? Healing and didn't even know they needed healing until healing had occurred. So they were perishable because of their what? Perishable thinking. When you begin to heal them, it became the imperishable God. So they become imperishable through the healing. Now, guess what? Now we call Lily in a different manner now without trying to bring her into the strife. Now we bring her in as the mediator to the solution to what we're going through. That's the difference because now they understand your position. Make sense? All right. Who wants to close this out? <laughs> you want to try? No. All right, Trayvon. Close this out. You scared? Are you scared too? You live in the house too? Are you scared? Right, it's everything. Oh my goodness. Brother, you scared? Can you close it out? Says your brother, Keith, he's scared. Golly. <laughs> yes. Amen, amen, amen. We thank you all. We love you all. You guys have a blessed Father's Day, rest of the day, and prayerfully we will see you all tomorrow.